Hey y'all, Trevor here with Ride of the Leaf, and today we're going to be diving into a, uh, a company that has first started making their appearance on the West Coast and the Alberta side. We've got the Muskoka Grown V Edge. I'm really looking forward to trying this out. We've seen some of the pre-rolls work their way out out West, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how uh, the three and a half grams of the, uh, the Edge is going to do you guys. But first, we got an intro to get in here before we can dive into any more information. Let's see on the other sap. Welcome back, you guys. And like I said, we've got a three and a half gram of the edge from the folks over at Muskoka Grow. Before I get into any more details on this strain specifically or the three and a half itself, we're going to quickly walk you guys through exactly what we'll be covering in this one hitter read review so that you know whether you want to skip ahead to a specific part or if you just want to uh, cruise along with all of us. First things first, we cover the information on the container before we move over to the website that gives us a little bit more detail on the strain. The container provides us the three and a half grams per of information so the THC content the package date the price point all of the good stuff that you guys would like to know when you're deciding on which eighth to pick up the strain based specific information might actually help you determine the strain that you want to pick up because it'll go into a little bit more detail on the overall effects the aroma and the potential flavor that we have to experience you guys after that I go in and break down the bud myself with how close it is to the description that they provide for us so first things first, we crack open the container and we go into our look and aroma. That'll be the initial scale that we go against for the herbage scale, which will have six parts. First one being look and aroma. And pretty self-explanatory, you guys. How the bud smells, how the bud looks, gets us a score out of a 10. After that, we go into starting to consume the bud. First things first, we have our freshly charged boundless CFC vaporizer right here. We pack that up. We run it through three temperatures, 175, 205, and 2. Oh, yeah, 175, 205, and 220 is what we run the temperatures at. After that, we go ahead and pack up our bongs. Very similar to the way that we run our vaporizer, there are three temperatures that we initiate with, but it's means of starting the bowl up versus the actual temperatures in degrees. After that, we finish things off with a more classic means of smoking, that is via the pipe and the joint before we talk about the high and we give it its overall score. So there'd be six components to this review, each being comprised of a score out of 10. Eight or more is the ideal number we're looking for because anything in an eight, nine, or 10 for the score, if it averages out to a 48, you guys, we will get a beautiful herbage. We got one with the, uh, with the Quirkle and I'm increasingly surprised with the quality that came off of that bud every time I dive into it. I'm looking forward to seeing the edge is going to be a similar type of uh, experience and smoke, you guys. But with that being said, you know exactly what we're going to be getting into this uh, this review. So let's go ahead, cover the information, and then get into the review. So first things first, we have the Muskoka Grown The Edge. This came in with a THC total of 18.3%, a CBD total of 0.2%. We have a package date of December 30th, 2020, and a price point of $29.99. For the 3.5 grams, that's a damn good price. Now, moving over to the website. Let's go into the details they have here. The Edge is a classic sativa dominant skunk number one hybrid. Reminding you of the good old days, this unique variety offers sense of strong dill with subtle notes of fresh mulch and citrus. The forest colored large buds have a skunk appearance dusted with crystal like trichomes and orange pistils. The strong combination of terpenes results in intense flavors and aromas. So, that's the description we have from the Muskoka Grown website, you guys. There isn't much more for me to dive into without uh, being able to get that Urban Scale intro in here. So let's go ahead, get that in here, while we dive into the Edge, which is going to be dominant in that lemonine, marcinine, and pinene-based experiences, you guys. Let's get into this strain. Welcome back, you guys. So, first things first is we are going to take off of this lid, which honestly is a pretty unique combination of the uh, the tin can and the lid up top. So right here we have our seal for your own protection. 
and we'll pop that off and put that down on the recycling. Mmm, very aromatic. Definitely drier than I was originally expecting for like the freshness, but again, that dill description is not surprising. I am getting that. But a lemon citrusy push is definitely the more dominant experience. There is quite a bit of green overall as well for just that kind of herbal vegetative smell. It's still quite nice, quite enjoyable. Let's dump that three and a half out onto the tray and give you guys a look. So as you can see, we do have a lot of those nice dark forested colors as as the, the company described. So let's go ahead, pull out the little bit of the bigger nugs and see what we have here for overall quality. So it looks like there's just a handful of those really small little kind of almost next, next to nothing there nugs that I like to smoke first. So that's definitely what we're going to be smoking on first. And then you do have these, oh, we got one right here too. You got these two here, which are a little bit better. And then you're just getting into the bigger, denser nugs. And that's really how these guys are separated. These are a little bit more airy, a little bit of a lighter weight. You got a couple of denser nugs, three that are more. And then these four right here are really dense. I am curious to see how this 3.5 came out for weight. So let's go ahead, pull that out, turn you on. And we're going to put that tin right on there. Tear that. And in you go. You can't forget the last one. We are sitting at 3.56. So Muskoka groans. The edge comes in over that 3.5 grams, you guys. After having a couple of strains that have come in under that 3.5 grams, it's always nice to see one come in over. Now, we've got that done. The overall look and aroma of this bud is really nice. It has a really pungent aroma. But I'm curious to see if it's going to um, get a little bit of a almost richer, heartier aroma once we do bust it up. Just because there's something telling me that there's there's just a, a base aroma that I'm missing a little bit of. There's just something there that I feel like I'm missing if I don't dive in and take a whiff with it busted up. And yeah. Yeah, I definitely get that pine wooded based experience now. The dill is way more rich and potent than it was with the buds in full size. Overall, a good experience, but once I did bust it up, some of the interest I had was lost. So, the quality of the cannabis is good. The smell of the cannabis is really, really good. And the with the price point that it has, you guys... An 8 out of a 10 is is easy for me to uh, to give a score for this look and aroma because it it's outdone itself overall for the quality and just the freshness of this bud. But i got to roll up the joint for a little bit later down the review. And I'll be right back when we're diving in with the vaporizer before we get into the bongs, the pipe, and then smoking the joint that I'm about to roll. Thanks to the power editing. She'll be just a second, you guys. I'll see you over there when I'm explaining why 175 is going to be nice and potent for the lemonine and marisonine based terpenes. Cheers, and I'll see you there. Welcome back, you guys. Like I said, it'll only be a second. We're going to start things off with our Boundless CFC Vaporizer. We have three temperatures that we run on our Boundless CFC here. The first one is 175 degrees. And like I said, before we uh, switched over to here... We're diving in because of the lemonine and marisonine terpenes. And those are going to be two dominant terpenes in the strain. So hopefully, she'll be nice and potent. Lemonine, like its name, is going to be derived from the lemon style of flavor and experience that comes off of it. So that's citrus, acidic, sharp tones that are known for on the lemon side. Lemonine is our preferred way to enjoy that. That's what we're going to be diving into, you guys. After that, after that lemonine... There's the marisonine, which gives us a little bit more of a vegetative green flavor, but it's got a much wider range for its overall experience. It can go as far as a hopsy to as a juicy and fruity as a nice ripe mango and anything in between there. Now, when you get that lemonine and the marisonine working together, you can get a citronella, a lemongrass, a lemon wood type of flavor, but typically it's going to be very vegetative, very damp and a sharp 
acidic type of a flavor because that lemony needs to be predominant there. Now, 205, that's the next temperature that we go to. These, This temperature really allows a lot of the other terpenes to boil off and start to play a factor into not only the flavor but the overall effects that are coming off of this bud. 205 gives you the usually and typically the most rich, potent experience off of the bud. And that's because the majority of the other terpenes are boiling off. Creamy, chocolatey, cushy, rich, earthy. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of wood. Those are definitely the next step up, more predominantly. But all of those flavors can be experienced at the 205. 220, again, like the beginning, we have two key factors. beta carotene and THC. The THC boils off at its highest level right around that 220 degrees, so you start to feel the strongest effects. After that, you also have the um, beta carefully terpene boiling off at its highest level, so that's going to be a very peppered or wooded-based experience, you guys. Like I said, we run through each three of these temperatures. We go into detail on each of them. I talk about the overall experience, the smoothness, the, uh, the flavor that the bud has to put off. With the skunk number one base strain, I'm looking for that really sharp acidic gassy type of flavor you guys that uh that 175 should be the predominant flavor all the way through all three temperatures honestly until you get to the 220 where some wood and a little bit of pepper could play a factor you've got our teacup on here 175 is ready to go let's get hauling on our vaporizer nice light little bit of a citrus bite to it but nothing too overwhelming or too exciting it's very much reminding me of like just adding lemon to your tea or you have lemon added to your glass of water like it's very light and aromatic in that sense Overall, 175, it's all right. There's nothing really exciting me or getting me super hyped up to want to take another haul from it. But it's got a really nice kind of dilled flavor near the end. I was getting, I'm, and really that dilled flavor is something that I'm experiencing a lot more now as it's just sitting and settling on my tongue. 205 is what we have set next. Let's go ahead and dive into this one and see what... Um, it has to offer here because I think that the potency, the potency of this overall experience can increase quite a bit with this. Let's try this out. Definitely went richer, definitely went a little bit more on that skunk side than I was expecting it to, but it's nice. It definitely doesn't have that same sweet, rich experience. It's a little bit blander, a little bit more disappointing. I don't know where this is going to go, you guys. I feel like the flavor is just starting to diminish now. 220. Every haul I'm taking, I'm just losing more and more and more flavor from this strain. Let's see what the, the increased temperature will do. Same thing. It just went into kind of a damp wooded, wooded experience. This strain, I think, is most enjoyable at that lowest temperature. That lemony and maristine based flavor. I could have sat there and hauled on that all day. Now, for the overall effects, I'm not feeling very much at this point, which is a little bit surprising because typically sativa-based strains, when I vape them, I tend to feel that hit to the head a little bit. More dominant, more in the forefront than I do with the indica strains but or the ones that describe themselves as sativa and indica for its effects this guy I'm not getting very much the overall vape I'm gonna give a 7 out of a 10 because that initial flavor was quite enjoyable but moving into the later ones there was either no flavor as you get to the 220 or just diminishing flavor at the 205 which some strains have that. They're predominant at the initial flavor, and they just can't quite hold it up. And that's what I was experiencing through this. Now, 
when we get through our bongs, because that's what we're transitioning to now, is going to be very similar as our vaporizer, except we use our hemp wick for the 175, so for our lowest temperature. After that, we go ahead and we go to our clipper lighter for our 205 equivalent. And then we finish things off with a jet lighter for the 220 equivalent. Like I said, three different temperatures, three different ways of igniting this bud. We go through each. They both have different milking periods as well as a different initial onset of that temperature. So it changes the overall smoking experience, you guys. All those things play a factor. The size and shape of the rig in and of itself has a factor to play. So three different rigs, three different ways of smoking it. Let's go ahead. Smoke our way through these so we can score it and keep on crushing this review. Cheers, you guys, and let's get to it. Second bowl, let's get to it. Final bowl, crushing it. <laughs> okay guys, taste from a bong, I'm gonna end up giving it seven out of a 10. Now, smooth experience is the best way and really the only way that I would describe this strain for the bong because the overall flavor in and of itself wasn't that enjoyable it wasn't i wouldn't i don't want to say that enjoyable it wasn't that potent for it to be that enjoyable it's got some really key and interesting flavors that honestly the second rip the one with the clipper lighter was definitely the most enjoyable i found that when we added the jet lighter to it <coughs> it almost kind of washed out the flavor because the very watered experience that watered taste that's the best way to describe this bud across the board the initial flavor was very strong at the onset but it passed into just kind of this damp vegetative flavor now when i took the second rip with the clipper lighter and the beaker bong the sharp candied lemon flavor came in. It would settle right in the back of my mouth and just kind of hit me with these odd little citrus waves and citrus uplifts that I'd pick up every once in a while. And that was quite enjoyable. I'd get that from the second rip. Now, when we go to the third rip, it came really, really acidic and sharp. With that flavor, so it's just tastes now more so like a lemon in a glass of tea or lemon in a glass of water, like just a little bit of lemon added to whatever you're already enjoying. That's the best way I can describe that overall experience and enjoyment. Now, it was smooth, very smooth, but the flavor in and of itself wasn't so much so enjoyable or exciting, it just had. It wasn't a bad flavor. It's just, it wasn't enough to get me excited. How smooth the smoke was earned it the extra point from a six because it was a relatively smooth smoke and I was able to crush all three bong rips back to back to back without having that really heavy and iconic back to throat burn. But with that being said, you guys, go ahead, light up our Regal cigar, see what it has to do through the pipe before we smoke our joint and wrap up this review. Cheers. Okay, guys, this is going to get a 6 out of a 10 for the taste from a pipe. And you guys know, if you've been on the channel before, you know exactly why it is getting the 6 out of a 10. Nothing more than just the taste of the pipe came through. And with these Regals, I enjoy the flavor of the pipe. But if the strain can't produce anything more than the pipe produces for flavor, it gets a 6, hands down, no questions asked. That's what happened with the mango taffy. That's what happened with the edge, you guys. That's going to continue to happen while we're using that regal pipe because it's enjoyable but it's just not unique so i can't really score it higher than enjoyable now
You got the joint here. Ooh, very lemon. Very herbal. And very damp. What was he for the this experience on the dry haul? So let's light it up and see if it burns that way too. Cheers, you guys, and I'll see you after about halfway through. Hey guys, so taste from a joint, I'm gonna end up giving this a seven out of a 10. Now, it's enjoyable smoke, very smooth from start to finish. Definitely something you could easily smoke and draw on throughout the day. Definitely has that nice light kind of herbal experience to it. There's not much of a citrus flavor once you get past that halfway mark, but it's still light flavor, enjoyable, something you could smoke throughout the day. Overall, there's no real heavy, unique flavor from it to, to have you get tired of that experience. Now saying that, would you want to grab something else and smoke that just to change things up? Absolutely. But nice, smooth, even smoke throughout the day. The high is going to score really, really similar with A7 as well. And the reason I give that is, again, it's that nice midday smoke. You're just, you're not really looking for anything to rock you off your boat, but it gives you a decent little uplift, nice little energetic kick. And uh, <coughs> just kind of supports you through to the end of the day. Really enjoyable smoke, really even smoke. And uh, honestly, a strain that, I don't know if I'd necessarily go out of my way to pick up this three and a half, but I wouldn't shy away from it, if that makes sense, you guys. it's a, For the price point on it, it's a really enjoyable smoke. For somebody who's a lighter toker, who's looking for something to just give them that kind of more clear-headed uplift, definitely a strain I'd recommend. Um, for those of you guys who smoke quite a bit more, heavier tolerance, I don't know if this will be the one for you. I think it's a little bit more of that newcomer or a lighter toker influenced for um, the overall experience but honestly guys it was still quite a good smoke and the 42 out of 60 i th i would say is a fair score um the smoke is smooth the overall experience through everything is really nice it's just there's nothing there to really impress you there's nothing there to really blow you away it's just all the right and every so often finding strains that are like that for 30 dollars an eighth can't complain about that you guys it's a if it's a smooth smoke and at least gives you an enjoyable experience when you do can't complain too much but with that you guys let's go ahead wrap this one up i really enjoyed smoking on this edge i think i'm gonna enjoy smoking on it when we can kind of blend it up with a little bit of that strawberry cough i think those two the two terpene blends of that will be a good combination and some of the other mixtures that i can think of but for the time being you guys Let's wrap this one up. I hope you guys enjoyed, but uh, we'll see you tomorrow with some dab bods, sativa, shatter. We're going to review that on Shatterday with y'all. So let's enjoy it. Right, cheers. I'll see you guys then.